In prior examples, we had created our interior geometry for our office building. We'd applied coincident point constraints and linear constraints to get the space to behave in a parametric fashion that makes sense. To see what I'm talking about, we'll just go ahead and hide all the constraints. We can select a piece of geometry here. Let's grab a gripping point, stretch that out and we see that the geometry is moving in a way that makes sense. However, we'll undo for a moment. We can see that there is clear mirroring or symmetric behavior in this example about this interior line of symmetry. So what we want to do now is introduce a symmetric constraint, which we see here. And we will tell this surface of the building to be symmetric to this one about this line of symmetric action. So we expect to see three prompts. Now I will go ahead and turn on our constraints so that we can see them. I'll go ahead and select the symmetric constraint here, selecting this object, making it symmetric to this one, about this line of symmetric action. And we can see here that the symmetric glyphs have shown up. Now, since this object and this object will be symmetric, and since all the other geometry is somehow constrained back to these objects, this one simple symmetric constraint is gonna drive all the geometry in the building example. So let's go ahead and hide our constraints here so that we can see the geometry more clearly, and let's apply our grip editing test and see how it works. So we go ahead and select this gripping point. We pull this out. And sure enough, we see evidence of symmetric constraints. It really is just that simple. You can see that this one symmetric constraint driving across this line of symmetric action has taken advantage of all the other constraints to make the building morph and adapt as you would expect using symmetric behavior. So this is quite powerful and it's very easy to use. The workflow of it is important though. You need to make sure that all the geometry is correctly constrained from a coincident point and linear perspective so that all the geometry reacts as you would expect. Then you place the symmetric constraint so that it can drive all the other constraints along. It's very straightforward to use if you use it in the right order and quite powerful.